Hello and welcome to Bangalore School of Speech and Drama's annual day 2020. The annual day is the most exciting time of the year for us. It is the time of the year when our students get to explore their creativity, devise drama and shine on stage. But the pandemic has turned our world upside down but we are a speech and drama institute. Improvisation is our specialty. In true BSSD fashion, we have transitioned without missing a beat. Leveraging the online format, we were able to add to our existing curriculum, introducing our students to a host of different artists and performing techniques. The students have in turn stepped up to the plate, innovating, adapting and embodying the spirit of theatre in its purest form. At this point, I'd like to mention that we were the only institute in India to have sent up our students for an online performance exam with Lambda, the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. Out of the 88 students who attempted the exam, every one of them scored a distinction, an incredible feat even if I say so myself, and one that we have achieved once before. This just goes to prove that notwithstanding the medium, learning at BSSD never fails, never flags. At the annual day, we showcase all our students. It is an opportunity for them to step into the spotlight. You will see our little ones playing to the gallery, performing funny family poems. Our not-so-little ones exploring devised drama. And our seniors pulling out all the stops at the Battle of the Houses. John Steinbeck once said, Theatre is the only institution in the world that has been dying for 4,000 years and has not yet succumbed. It takes tough and devoted people to keep it alive. Well, we at BSSD are nothing if not tough and devoted. And theatre here, I'm glad to say, is alive and kicking. So sit back, grab your popcorn and enjoy the show. Hello, what have you been up to? Oh, nothing much, just locked in with my family. How is that going? My family has been driving me mad. Mine too. Just the other day, my little brother asks my father, Dad, how was good to eat? Dad says, that's disgusting. Don't talk about things like that over dinner. After dinner, my father asks my brother, Now, what was it you wanted to ask me? To which my brother replies, Oh, nothing. There was a bug in your soup, but now it's gone. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard. Did you know this year at BSSD, the basic level students are doing poems about families? Really? I bet that's going to be a lot of fun. Even more fun because the parents and grandparents are watching. So what are we waiting for? Let's get the show on the road. How to create a perfect family? You will need one large house. Three to six people depending on how long you want to wait for it to be done. Three cups of pets. Two cups of anger and frustration, three quarts of laughter, four teaspoons of trust, and last but definitely not the least, lots and lots of love. First, open the house and make sure to be the right size for your family. Mix the desired amount of people with pets, carefully so you do not damage them. In a separate bowl, stir the love and laughter together. Such a side. Taking each person separately, evenly, this will be the patient and dust. Making sure that each one gets an equal amount. Failure to distribute evenly may lead to a different recipe. See the recipe for my patient family for details. Carefully open the bottle of anger. Using a Q-tip, dab small portions of anger onto each person. Lastly, take the love and laughter and sprinkle it over the whole house, pets and people. Let it sit until all the ingredients are thoroughly combined and voila! Your perfect family is complete! The schools are now open but this year at mine. The teachers and students are meeting online. It's quite a bit different but I think it's cool since this way I'll never be tardy to school. My mom doesn't yell at me, making a fuss. Then if I don't uh, hurry, 
I might miss the bus. To meet with my teacher or talk to my teacher, I roll out of bed and turn on my computer. I don't mean my backpack. My shoes are my coat. It saves so much time when your school is remote. I don't pack a lunch and I don't take a shower, which means I can sleep in a whole extra hour. My family is full of gadgets and new technology. My mother likes a radio. My father likes TV. My sister likes to dance around the house with headphones on. My brother Plan is busy until the break of dawn. Baby has a smartphone and a touchscreen tablet too. If we had pets, I'm sure that even they would have a few. We chat with instant messaging, we email, and we text. We are always looking forward to the gadget we we'll get next. The power went out recently, and that day was like no other. A screen to a blank and strange but true. We talk to one another. My mom makes disgusting spaghetti with horseradish sauce and sardines. Ugh. She tops it with pickles and mustard, bananas and barbecue beans. She serves it for supper on Sunday. On Monday we have it for lunch. It's breakfast on Tuesday and Wednesday. By Thursday, you guessed it, it's brunch. I don't like to hurt my mom's feelings. I said that I loved it. I lied. I always give mine to our doggy, and that's why our poor doggy died. So next time you serve a spaghetti, dear mother, don't make it like that. Please serve it with red sauce and meatballs, and that way it won't kill the cat. My father knows the proper way the nation should be run. He tells his children every day just what should now be done. He knows the way to fix the trust. He has a simple plan. But if the furnace needs repairs, we have to hire a man. My father, in a day or two, could lie with thieves in jail. There's nothing he cannot do. He knows no word like fail. Our confidence he would restore. Of that, there is no doubt. But if there is a gentleman, we have to send it out. All public questions that arise. He settles on the spot. He waits not till the tumor is dead, but grabs it while it's hot. In matters of finance, he can tell Congress what to do. But oh, he finds it hard to meet his bills as they fall due. It almost makes him sick to read the things lawmakers say. Why, father is just the man they need. He never goes astray. A word is very quickly and as fast as I can write it. But when a name starts to pass, his mother has to fight it. In conversation, father can do many wondrous things. He is built upon a wiser plan than presidents or kings. He knows the ins and outs of each and every deep transaction. We look to him for theories, but look to Ma for action. I had to get a haircut. It was looking much too long. I let my sister cut it. I mean, what could she do wrong? She clipped some bald spots here and there. She whacked the sides a little, and then she shaved a three-inch stripe directly down the middle. She chopped some sections super short and left others long and wild. Then she shaved her eyebrow off before she looked at me and smiled. I don't think that I let her give me haircuts anymore, or maybe I'll just wait a while, at least until she's four. For my brother on his birthday, by Ken Nesbitt. For my brother on his birthday, I was generous and kind. 
as his sister, I was glad to get the best things I could find. I was sure he wanted tutu and a purple mini skirt with some ballerina slippers and a sequins covered shirt. I expected he'd want lots of dolls. I knew he'd need a bike. I picked a pink and sparkly one. I figured he would like. I selected a tiara like a princess ought to wear. That's a bunch of bows and ribbons and some scrunchies for his hair. I'm aware I'm much too generous with presents, but you see, he deserves it. On my birthday, he got baseball cards for me. Of all the birds I must bear, my brother's number one. Our parents really messed up there. They raised an awful son. He's lazy, stubborn, rough, and mean, and thinks he's boss of me. The biggest grouch you've ever seen. As greedy as can be. Constant teasing makes me sore. He does it just for spite. He cheats. And brags, and furthermore, he tickles when we fight. Unless he stops, I swear someday I'll punch his ugly face. And if they let me have my way, I'll shoot him into space. But other times he's not so bad. He taught me lots of games. He gives me toys and books he had, and calls me funny names. He helps me when my homework's hard and finds me when I hide. He built a tree out in my yard and let me play inside. He laughs at every joke I tell and gives me good advice. He knows when I'm not feeling well and treats me extra nice. So, all in all, I have to say, it's better in the end to let the no good nuisance stay. My brother is my friend. Bullfrog. He mutilates flowers. Sleeps in his underwear. Never takes showers. He welches whenever he drinks ginger ale. Please tell everybody my brother is for sale. Twenty-five dollars, as cheap as it can be. On second thought, you can just have him for free. My father's listed everything he's planning to repair. I hope he wouldn't get tempted for a talent in there. He tinkered with the toaster when the toaster wouldn't pop. Now we keep it disconnected, but we cannot make it stop. He played with the blender and took the clock apart. Now the clock is running backward, and the blender would not start. Every window pane is putty now. Admits the slightest breeze, and his half destroyed the furnace. If we are lucky, we won't freeze. The TV set was working, yet he thought he'd poke around. Now the picture is out of focus, and there isn't any sound. There's a faucet in the basement that had dripped one drop all year. Since he fixed it, we can't find it without wearing a scuba gear. I wish my father wouldn't try to fix things any more. For everything he's mended is more broken than before. If my father finally fixes every item on his list, we'll be living in the garden for our house will not exist. Finally, it's time for me to introduce the chief guest for today. It gives me the greatest pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Abhishek Majumdar is a playwright, director and scenographer. He is the ex-artistic director and founder of two theater companies, the Indian Ensemble and Bhasha Center, both based out of Bangalore. He has created work and been commissioned by several theaters across the world, including Rang Shankara Bangalore, Prithvi Theater Mumbai, the Royal Court Theater London, National Theater London, Deutsche Schauspiel Haus, Hamburg, Deutsche Schauspiel Haus, Freiburg, Yale Repertory Theatre, Theatre du Soleil, Arta, Dhaka University, International Dramaturgy Festival, Buenos Aires, Playco, New York, Chaninate Manch, New Delhi, to name a few. 
He is the recipient of the Charles Wallace India Trust Fellowship, Inlax Fellowship, Shankar Nagaranga Karmi Award, Mahendra Excellence in Theatre Award, Hindu Metro Plus Playwrights Award, and Toto Fund the Arts Creative Writing Award. His work has been performed and translated in English, Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, Spanish, French, Czech, Bengali, Urdu, Kashmiri, Tibetan, and Kannada. Currently, he is creating new work for the Royal Court Theatre London, Playco New York, Bangalore Theatre Company, New York University Abu Dhabi, and the Folk Theatre in Gothenburg, Sweden. He is also working on a book of essays on theatre making as part of the Theatre Makers series of Bloomsbury. He has been published by Oberon Books, Penguin India, Palgrave and Bloomsbury. He is a member of Lincoln Center Directors Lab 2012 and Artistic Directors of the Future ADF London. Apart from theatre and literature, this is interesting. He has also been published in the areas of mathematics, environmental economics and environmental chemistry. So now you get why I needed this. It is our honor and greatest pleasure, Mr. Majumdar, to have you with us today. Despite his extremely busy schedule, Mr. Abhishek Majumdar has always found time to talk to young people, young theater makers, to inspire them to explore uh, theater, to push their boundaries, to find themselves through this medium. We are extremely fortunate to have you in our midst today. Welcome, Mr. Abhishek Majumdar. Good evening and uh, I extend many congratulations to all the students of Bangalore School of Speech and Drama who have uh, made all these wonderful works um, in, in this very, very unusual year. Thank you to Bangalore School of Speech and Drama for inviting me to present my thoughts on this wonderful evening. It is really, really fascinating to see how much work all of you have done and your passion and dedication and talent uh, in the making of theatre. I know that you know, you're all aware that worldwide many theatres right now in different traditions are working very hard to stay alive, to keep open. And ironically, this is also the time when the world needs the arts the most. Because on one hand, we are have a crisis of a virus. On the other hand, the answer is not only a vaccine, but also empathy. This is a time when we need to feel each other's pain. We need to stand by each other. Uh, there are many families which are in distress. They need to have a space where they can reflect, where they can laugh, where they can cry. And as artists, your work is more important than ever in the middle of a crisis like this. And I think what you have shown by your work to all the professional theatre makers of the world is that with dedication, once one knows the purpose of things, it is possible to make good art in all conditions. So I really, really would like to congratulate all of you and also congratulate uh, the faculty of Bangalore School of Speech and Drama who have been able to inspire uh, so many people and I'm sure in the midst of a lot of changes right now going online or meeting in hybrid models and being able to be with you and provide this wonderful platform and education to you. I wish you the very best. Thank you for sharing your work. With best wishes, have a good, good year ahead and keep making theatre. Bye. Now we come to the most exciting part of today's performance, the Battle of the Houses. This was a tradition we started at BSSD back in 2009 when we first initiated the four houses. For those of you who are new to this, let me tell you, we have four houses at BSSD. Peter Pan, Willy Wonka, Henry Higgins and Severus Snape, named after, like you can see, four iconic literary characters. Each year, the houses are given a new challenge. They pick it up and design and create a performance around it and compete with each other. This battle is nothing short of a bloodbath minus the blood. Each year, the houses are given a new challenge. They have to pick it up and build and design a performance around it. This year was harder than ever before, I think, because they had to create a performance to fit the online format. And I have to say, they have done me proud. I'm so proud of the work you all have done. Before we uh, go into the performances, I would like to let you know the categories for which you would be judged. The categories for the trophies are best soundtrack, best choreography, Best Costume, Best Makeup, Best uh, Script, Best Vocals, Best Ensemble Cast, Best Director, Best Production Manager. 
of course uh, best production design best actor and finally the best house before we jump into the battle i also have something special for you here is a message for you from the very first directors of the four houses they are in different parts of the world right now but their hearts are in the right place with you so let's hear it from the very first directors of the four houses and then on to the battle hi everyone my name is asima and i am a proud bssdn till today was a member of the original senior batch and the first director of peter pan house go peter pan um growing up bss he was a safe space for me a place where we could all be as creative as we wanted knowing that we're just working towards making more good wonderful theater and more good wonderful worlds for all of us to to play in and for all of us to share with each other um and having houses has always been uh really special to me because it not only made us feel safe within our own batch of students but it made us feel safe within our house and made us really competitive but at the end of the day what we were hoping for was not to really win a trophy though of course that was really important but we were just so excited that because of this competition you know because of the venue of annual day every year we would have four amazing takes on whatever the theme was for that year that would really showcase that there's no one way to do something there's no one way to be uh wonderful or talented there's no one way to approach a piece of music or art or theater um and i think that really speaks volumes it spoke volumes to me as a kid there's no one way to be and there's no one made way to be great um and bssd has always shown us that there's many ways to make magic and so i'm glad that um magic continues and excited to be part of this annual day virtually and hope that i can be back at some point to be part of it um in person sending love to you all especially peter pan house hi there it's been a while since we've directed our energies at each other but it feels like yesterday that this great house was born to present an insurmountable challenge to the other houses it feels like yesterday that this house spent numerous nights scripting plays directing them and even making chocolate chip cookies for the entire audience because that's who we are we are the music makers we are the dreamers of dreams to you my dear house willy wonka you have my heart my wishes and my dreams i am confident that you have shone bright and that you will continue to shine bright to the other houses what exactly can i say maybe by the end of the day you'll be left saying kaash mein willy wonka mein hota maybe by the end of the day as we take our rightful position on the podium we look at you and say your place is by my side my dear i wish each and every house the warmest wishes and the best annual day that they can ever have this is such a full circle moment for me hi guys i am uh, masira sheik i was the first ever director of the henry higgins house Now every house at BSSD has its own spirit and I'm not going to waste my time talking about other houses because honestly who has the time for that but coming back to the Henry Higgins house we've always had a very calm and composed vibe and uh, music has been at the crux of our spirit now last year we took away an insane number of awards and I don't know why this year needs to be any different I have a very special message for team Henry Higgins this year There's always going to be another mountain. You're always going to want to make it move. There's always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes you're going to have to lose. It ain't about how fast you get there. It ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. It really is the climb, guys. I want you to go out there this year. and respect every house because you know how hard they've worked cheer them on because that's who you are but when you go out there you're not going to win on gimmicks or taunting other houses you're going to win on your talent and your skill set because there is nothing that's stopping you kids go out there and be the incredible kids that you are i believe in you and i know that you're going to make me proud i love you all hi guys it's that time of the year again it's show time It has been a difficult adjustment for sure. 
But if there's anyone who can make it through the difficulties, the uncertainties, the trials and tribulations, it is Severus Snape. We have a legacy when it comes to the Battle of the Houses. When the odds are stacked against us, we don't play by the rules. We reinvent the game and we play to win. The annual day is a special time. It's the one time of the year that you are completely in control. As someone who has written plays professionally for the stage, I have to say the opportunity and learnings of the Battle of the Houses is invaluable. It's the one time of the year when everyone in Severus Snape, new and old, teen and tween, come together to literally make magic. So let the others sing and dance and try their silly little gimmicks, but we'll continue to put them to shame with our sheer ingenuity. We have what they don't, a drive to do whatever it takes to win. Don't get me wrong, they're good, but good guys come in last. This is our legacy. Year after year, we thrive, we change, we innovate. We find new and beautiful ways to tell stories that others can barely dream about. So, remember who you are. Be brave. Be bold. Be magical. Hi, I'm Amta Shastri, director of Peter Pan. Have you ever, instead of farewell, always wanted to have a prom? Ever been in search of a promised land? Well, our little huddle of lost boys from Neverland bring you a story of longing. Longing for a place that is not home, but with a twist that will leave pride brimming in your chest. I am beyond proud of my team for bringing this story to life and to your screens. Well, the sky's the limit when you're the only house that can fly, isn't it? Hey guys, my name is Sandhi Agarwal. And I'm the director of Willy Wonka this year. I just wanted to remind all the other houses that Willy Wonka is the best house. So don't be too disappointed if you don't win. When you don't win. On a more serious note, I think all of the performances today will mesmerize you. And to everyone in Willy Wonka, I could not be more proud of us. We have created something that represents a cause larger than any single one of us. And I hope we can leave our audience with something to think about. Go Willy Wonka! Dawn is the first light of day. Do you know what color it is? Sirens and stop signs are the first things you see on the road. Should I tell you what color they are? Henry Higgins is the first name on the scoreboard. We all know what color they are. Wingardium Levio so long, you can't slither into the top now. The only thing golden you'll ever see are tickets. You'll never land first place. Like red lights and traffic signals, we will stop you in your tracks. Like red bows on Christmas presents, we will always be on top. Henry Higgins, we are red and ready to take you down. There's two sides to every story, but one never gets any glory. Without the villains, there would be no heroes. Severus Snape is going to take you deep into the darker side of every Disney story, bringing in the light to the villain's lair. We are better than the tenfold. Victory to the black and gold! is dipped in iron, hardening into a language that I've known only as a colonizer's gift. So, I put a bow on top of it and shoot silver-tipped arrows for words. Rolling my R's, drawing out my A's, so that the word abroad stays a little longer. When the soil of my home mixes with the metal I have been taught to chew, I corrode. Turning my stomach into knots and call it to practice for when I sail across the seas. If asked, I'd rather stand in the Starbucks line for a frappe than sit there and gully water jelly. 
I am in search of a promised land. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I know there's nothing left worth staying for. This paradise is something I need in your oh, 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 oh. See, I don't think I can fight this anymore. I'm listening with one foot out the door. And something has to die to be reborn. And I don't want to be here anymore. Hey, her shan. Hey, Hindi bull me. Kya hai apman? On crazy zavapar, Asani sit there to jati hai. Lekin. Bharti bhasha ki midhas alaghi man me reh jati hai. Saat se mundin me terna na chahi. बस गंगा की शुभ जल में बहना चाहूं चाय कॉफी कोई भी मुझसे पूछे नहीं झिझकता हूं मैं साफ-साफ कह देता हूं मैं चाय का शौक ही रखता हूं मैं चाय का शौक ही रखता हूं अ फॉल्स आइडेंटिटी स्क्रीम्स माय नेम अंटिल माय डस्टबिन इज फुल ऑफ डैमेज्ड हेयर बिकॉज़ कोकोनट ऑयल लॉस्ट इट्स बैटल विद ब्लॉन्ड एंड ब्लीच फेयर मींस ब्यूटी एंड ब्यूटी मींस पेन Ever since I gave up some afternoon cricket games, that's what I've done, and that's what I've played. But I have known ever since I pined for a place that was not home. That the passport is not the same thing as a welcome mat. Only one of those can be walked over. Yet somehow, I'm always the one to long for the farmer. If asked, I'd rather stand in a Starbucks line for a frappe. That's a bed. Kali wali chai. I am in search of a promised land. I lost myself at night, but you hid all over. These are the things I packed, and then the wind and caved, and I'm a mess right now. My heart is in two places. I feel stuck at home. The others often raise it. I've been running and running and running and running away. I know they'll catch me running and running and running to opposite ways, to opposite ways. I can't let my past catch me now, me now. I can't let my past drag me down, me down. अब समझ में आया ये बाल इतने मजबूत और चमकदार कैसे बने क्योंकि माँ हर हफ्ते तेल लगाने के लिए पीछे पड़ी रहती थी जब एयरपोर्ट का नमस्कार वेलकम टू इंडिया सुनाई देती है इंटरनेशनल पासपोर्ट्स की कीमत हवा में गुम हो जाती है स्पेशली इंडियन सिनेमा टू मी दैट्स अ मैटर ऑफ स्कॉन Instead of farewell, I've always wanted to have a prom. The word prom is half of the word promise, and that's all I've been raised on. Incomplete assurances of complete change. I spent all my life in search of air. Walls I can scale without worrying about barn stains. Proud that one point three. Billion people are fighting for. I'd rather stand in Starbucks line for a frappe than sip that gully wali chai. I am in search of a promised land. And I was running far away. I ran off the world someday. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Oh, oh, then I was dancing in the rain. I felt alive and I can't complain. बचपन में विदेश में घर बनाने की बड़ी ख्वाहिश थी लेकिन अब मेरी मातृभूमि की ममता मैं खुलेआम अपनाती हूँ 
इधर सांस लेने में हिचकिचाहट नहीं रही पान के दाग एक हस्ताक्षर बन के रह गए सारे सौ करोड़ लोग इस मैदान को घर बुलाते हैं चाय कॉफी फिर से पूछना फिर से जवाब मैं देता हूँ मैं चाय का शौक ही रखता हूँ मैं चाय का शौक ही रखता हूँ दिस इज माई प्रॉमिस लैंड वतन वतन मेरे आबाद रहे तू वतन वतन मेरे आबाद रहे तू मैं जहाँ रहूँ जहाँ मैं याद रहे तू मैं जहाँ रहूँ जहाँ मैं याद रहे तू ए वतन मेरे वतन ए वतन मेरे वतन You may write me down in history, your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. इन मर्दों ने अपने घर की औरतों की आजादी को छीन लिया है। घर से निकलने मत दो। घर की लक्ष्मी घर में रहती है, अच्छा रहता है। पूरे कपड़ा पहन के रहती है, चुन्नी रखती है, सलवार समीप पहनती है। और अगर अपने मर्जी से वो बोलेगी हम अपने मनपसंद का कपड़ा पहनेंगे तो आप नहीं पहनने दीजिएगा। नहीं चलेगा ही नहीं हमारे घर में तो। चिकट भी पी रही हैं, शराब भी पी रही हैं, देखो सरयाम पी रही हैं। इनके पास अच्छे अच्छे फ्रेंड हैं। तुम पढ़ लेते हैं क्या करोगी? चूल्हा चौका ही तो फूकना है। नहीं सुनना पड़ता, नहीं सहना पड़ता। और मैं भी जाती बस्ते को टाउन स्कूल, शब्दों अच्छे से उठा बैठा करो और हंसने की तमीज सीख लो नहीं सुनना पड़ता नहीं सहना पड़ता और मैं भी अपने अधरों को बेफिक्र छोड़ पाती हंसती मन चाह उड़ने को आसमान में पंख फैलाती काश तो लड़का होती तो तुम्हारी जबान बहुत चलती है आजकल लड़कियों को कम बोलना चाहिए नहीं सुनना पड़ता नहीं सुनना। और मैं भी सुना पाती जहाँ को अपनी अभिलाषा है खबों को मन चाह रंग दे पाती शब्दों को बना देती इंद्रधनुष काश मैं लड़का बेटी तो घर से बाहर ज्यादा देर मत रहा करो जमाना बहुत खराब है नहीं सुनना पड़ता नहीं सहना पड़ता और मैं भी उड़ती फिरती तितलियों के संग देख आती सारा जहाँ तुम्हें नौकरी करने की क्या जरूरत शादी के बाद पति के घर पर बैठकर खाना नहीं सुनना पड़ता नहीं सहना पड़ता और मैं भी अपने पैरों पर खड़ा हो पाती बिना तक मगाए धन पाती आत्मनिर्भरता का प्रतीक पर अगर मैं लड़का होती तो मैं भी होती पुरुष प्रधान समाज की एक संख्या जिनकी आवाज नारी शक्ति को कम अंकता है भूलकर लक्ष्मी बाई सरोजनी नायडू की तरफुकार को और बन जाती है कौन आवाज जिसकी शोर शराबे नीति कानून और अहंकार के तले कुछ ही जाती है नारी की आवाज खाली प्याली सी राते पूरी भर जाने दे जी में जो आए वैसा मुझको कर जाने दे मन का है कोना कोना होना ही था ये होना मेरे तो आधा पौना जीना नहीं मन का है कोना कोना झूठा है बोले जोना जीना क्या आधा पौना मेरा है पूरा ही समान You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Your place is by my side. 
my dear. A hole in my hand. When well, I'm feeling rather queer and hard to understand. Not mid that fierce forensic crew who argue in the courts, but doing all that you can do while I am out of sorts. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. To me, it all seems very clear. Yours to submit and bow. Mine to command and dominate. Your place is by my side, my dear. A stroking of my brow, consoling me for all my ills, my proud position brings. The while you find vicarious thrills, midst all the humbler things. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling down like teardrops. Weakened by my soulful cries? Somebody get me a hammer Wanna break all the clocks and the mirrors And go back to a time that was different A time when I Didn't feel like there was something missing And my body and mind are so distant Don't know how to escape from this prison How can I Free my seems very plain. While I'm strong, I'm free. But when I feel a little pain, your place is by my side again to calm and comfort me. But if you went out on your own and left me in my pride, what could I do, dear, all alone? Your place is at my side. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Don't 
Don't be shy, girl, take it off. This is what you want. You belong, so they like you. Do they like you? You don't have to try so hard. You don't have to give it all away. You just have to get up, get up, get up, get up. You don't have to change a thing, a thing. You don't have to try, 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 try. You don't have to try, try, try. I don't have to try, 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 try. I don't have to try. You don't have to try. Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am the black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling. I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's so wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. One day you're gonna sing this with me, okay? Now give mommy a big smile. You say this so much you don't know. <laughs> you need to go and buy yourself. Sing with me, Maya. Oh, oh, oh. Said it's true that, that the growing only happens on your own. Maya, come sing with me. Mom, I'm too old for this. I don't think you have to leave If the change is what you need You can change right next to me When you're high, I'll take the lows You so can dance and I can flow And we'll take no, it slow I could solve And any grow problem as song. we go now, I don't even recognize you anymore, Maya Grow as we go Is this what happens when kids grow up? Class Maya, why aren't you first? I tell you why, you have the worst work ethic I've ever seen. You sleep and eat and stare at that computer screen. You want books to read? Take Political Science, Volume 3. You say you want to be free. Nothing comes free. You know the bills I pay? You want new clothes every other day. I want to be free, it seems. Come the next exam and then we'll see. Be perfect, Maya. Be perfect, like me. Why are you not sure, Maya? Why are you not sure when you need to be up here? Up here with the ones who have a promising career. Who listen when information goes in one ear and doesn't come out the other. You will never be up here, Maya. You act as if the act of listening is a crime, or you would have heard me the 666th time I told you to stop to even know Paying attention to what I'm saying? You're always stuck in that dream world of yours. Those books that look like nothing but trash. Why don't you take out the trash, Maya? Why don't you help with the chores and go to the store? When you were four, we had no complaints. I work and work to get a roof over your head. It's around 2 a.m. and I go to bed. But I'm fine. I'm perfect. Be perfect, Maya. Be perfect, like me. Is there something wrong with you? A loose screw or two that ruined your ability to function? Why are you always so tired? 
Your life is uninspired and small, or do you sprawl on the couch with outstretched limbs like a sloth in slow motion? Where is your devotion to succeed, Maya? Did it disappear into the books that you read? Do I need to force feed you discipline till you finally concede? I cook and I clean and I don't stop till the soles of my feet bleed. But I'm fine. I'm perfect. Be perfect, Maya. Be perfect like me. Attention, Maya. You need to be disciplined, Maya. Your life is a disaster. Just like your grades. Just like your teeth. Just like your future. Your life is not a book, Maya. Stop giving me that look, Maya. I'm just trying to fix you. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to love you. You have to let me love you. So, so that you can be perfect. Be perfect like me. Never like you before, like they would have young and foolish, far from a modern student. Because they can forget that they were once exactly like you. Except when it's time to remind you that they know better and close every argument with experience is the best teacher. Every conversation falls into I'm right, you're wrong, without bothering to see where you're coming from. All of their expectations. You can't feed on the mill. You must be extraordinary. Success must begin voluntary. You slam the door. Your feet are on cobblestones. How did you not know? Feed it that lips just in reach of your fingers. Sweetness leaving a prison behind. Yeah, that frees your mind. And then you stop and you think, why would he go? It was a split second decision, consumed by anger. You had no hesitation. But as you review your situation, give it thought and consideration. Your plan is crumbling. It has no foundation. These plans are a fire. You're caught in the crossfire. Between your heart and your head, it's haywire. You can't see the road ahead. You have this near and sin notion. Touching the light at the end of the tunnel. But this light, it's the headlight of an oncoming train. And you end up in pain. All in vain. You have no security. The obscurity of your future frightens you. You took for granted all that love. They kept you protected. What will they make of this madness? This mindless abrasiveness. The care that they hid behind theirs. Perhaps to prepare you before you walk. Unawares. Into the lines there. What you need is a deed that will lead to open communication. From shackles of shame. A world where they stop playing this game. Where they do not pass the blame. By remaining blatantly ignorant of their faults. Open communication.
could be your family's salvation. From the selfish slip-ups you've made, you left before trying. It's your price to pay. What, what do you, you say, Maya? Maya? Mom asked me to do this. Kidding. Whiskers isn't eating. Can you come home for our gap? And for me? If you're listening, come home, okay? Dad's been drowning himself in work meetings and late night television while mom's busying herself in the kitchen, refusing to accept that you're gone. Because it's a sign of weakness, isn't it? To accept our faults, to accept that our lives aren't about picket fences and bright smiles for the camera lenses. It's time we came to our senses. We're not perfect, Maya. We're not meant to be. I haven't even met you yet. But the moment I heard your heartbeat, I felt like I'd known you for a lifetime. I'll show this to you someday in the future, when it's the right time. I still remember the night we found out your mom was pregnant. I can't describe the joy I felt that second. I hope you can sense my love in this. I hope every word comes through the speaker and touches your heart. And when life knocks you down, I hope you remember that you're a work of art. I haven't met you yet, but I already love you more than life itself. And I hope you know that you're never going to have to face trials of life by yourself. I'll always be there to lift you up and push you on. Maya? No, me first. When you tell me that you love me, I know I should say it too. But those three words are nothing compared to what I feel for you. I iron it in the shirts I leave outside the bathroom door. It trickles down the umbrella that I hold out as it pours. It's mixed in with the soup. I feed you when you're ill. I pack it in the cheese sandwiches that I know you like grilled. I pour it in the coffee I wake you up with every day. I hope that it makes up for all the words that I don't say. When you tell me that you love me, I know I should say it back. But instead, I tell you that it's cold outside and hand you a scarf from the rack. Thank you.
filled with joy and laughter. The story is put over. The guest is on top. The kingdom is cheered. It's very well as well. There are some not for the glee who smear it and make this happen. My name and quiver with fear. The battle was won. The story was done. But patience, my dears. I've only just begun. Don't you wanna be evil like me? Don't you wanna be mean? Don't you wanna make mischief your daily routine? Someone dug it up and now the baby had the power. So I borrowed her and locked it up and hid her in a tower. Years went by, oh, the sacrifice! And against my better judgment, I fed her once or twice. Maybe you'd call it cruel, but Anna's would call it love. Daft love. I had in mind a greater plan, and the game would have to fall. But then if I got away to me, and fairest of them all. She needed structure in her life. She wasn't realistic. I give her chores and took away the things that she'd enjoy. But then I got her singing songs with birds and then a boy. She had to go and so she did. And you know what they say. An apple once a day keeps your enemies away. Call us wicked, call us mean, cruel and everything in between. You can say it's unjust, turning their dreams. Should ask. But this is what we call love. Tough love. You'll be back soon, you see. You remember you belong to me. You'll be back, time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well. Oh, she's right. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. Da 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 But a burning inside of me grew. A woman of my charm and beauty, it took years for me to reach my peak. I 
deserved a life free of strife. So why was my future so bleak? Forgotten, out of view. I pondered, would it you? Why was I never given my due? Now, what if I tell you? If there was a way to undo the moment your trouble began. What if Snow White never found the little cottage? What if Aladdin never found the lamp? What if little Cindy never heard no very good mother? And I for an eye, a wrong for a wrong. Under fate's binding toe, take the skill and brave and bold. If what you say is true, we are in debt to you. Sit down at my table, put your mind at ease. I put a spell on you. I look deep into your heart and soul Make your wildest dreams come true I would want, would want things I didn't try And I got friends on the other side It would a way to control time itself A power so strong It can alter the events of the past the present and the future. The sun died of Cronus to help us put out of the stature. Where is it? How can we acquire it? Deep inside a cave where you only have to wave a special magic wand to see a palace beyond. If you need help in hand to how to play it, I'll be there to help you through it. If you land in jail, I'll be your bail. Nothing to it. It's less about me and more about we. We lie and cheat in harmony. We're two of a kind. We're but the god. We do the worst we can with any master plan. Just wait and see. Together the key. To trick and trick in harmony. I went to find a sundial. Oh, I really went to my own. Who should I meet but the not so sweet fairy godmother? Who in fact is quite a bother. With a flick of a wrist and a bippity boppity boo. She worked the same magic she did on Cinderella's shoe. With a sugary sweet smile, she flew off with the dial. Oh, I want her dead! Off with her head! The one chance we had to undo our wrongs, they painted us black in their sappy songs. We've been betrayed and we've played a charade. They blame us all day, but who made us this way? They picked our lives apart and made it look like art. But that's all okay, we live another day. And so what if our tears? No pain, no gain. And as for me, I'll do my kind of thing. And you can't stuff your hats with the force to fight it and smile to your chaps. But there's a fire within, and it hurts to hold it in. Yes, you eclipsed our light with your collective might. So you think you're the ocean, you can swallow the sun. We'll rise again once this night is done. No one mourns the wicked. No one cries, they won't return. No one lays a lily on their grave. The good man scorns the wicked. Through their lives, the children learn what we miss when.
This year has been like no other. To say that it has been testing is the understatement of the century. But I think we've done all right. We've adapted faster than we thought we could. At VSST, we've been learning a host of new drama techniques. For the annual day, we've explored the art of devised drama and I've had a blast prepping for this day. We will now be showcasing 10 short performances. But each story begins with the same line. Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. Sophie's mummy said, I wonder who that could be. But each story ends in its own original and unpredictable way. So sit back and enjoy this unique experience. Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door and Sophie's mother said, I wonder who that is. Sophie went and peeked through the hole in the door and saw her friend Samira waiting outside with her dog Sweet. Sophie got really excited. She opened the door and greeted them. They sat and started having a conversation. So, what is the problem, Samira? Well, I'm going to Delhi in India to meet my grandparents and I will be back after 10 days. Till then, I need you to take care of Snowy. Is that fine? Sophie was amazed that she could finally have a dog for a few days. Sure, Samara. Thank you so much, Sophie. I'll be leaving today evening. Bye. 
once she left, Sophie took Snowy and his toys in her room. First, Snowy sniffed her, then licked her foot. From that time, Sophie played with him so much. She taught him how to handshake and also how to twirl. Oh, I'm just loving it. From now on, I, she will be my master and I will follow her everywhere she goes. Suddenly, Sophie's mother came and told her strictly. That is it, Sophie. It's time to go to bed. Okay, but in one condition, that Snowy will sleep with me, okay? Okay, sweetie. Good night. Sophie slept, but little did she know that she was allergic to dogs. The next day when she woke up, she sneezed so much. <laughs> Her mother said, <laughs> Sweetie, I think we should go to the doctor. Yes, mommy. <laughs> Without wasting time, they sat in the car and went to the doctor. The doctor examined Sophie. He asked nervously, Looks, uh, looks, uh, uh, like an allergy. Have you been someplace new or met uh, someone new? My friend came yesterday to leave her dog with me for a few days. I am afraid you'll um, you'll have to uh, uh, send the uh, dog back. Uh, Sophie looks like uh, you are. Allergic to it. Okay, Doc. Uh, after reaching home, Sophie tried to keep distance from Snowy. When he came near, she started sneezing again. <laughs> she ran about the house, but Snowy followed her everywhere. He even went to sit in the car with her. Sophie was feeling sad, angry, worried all at once. She was thinking of a solution when her mother called to have an herbal tea which she had prepared for Sophie's allergy. Sophie went back in the house and had the medicine. She felt nice and sat on the sofa to relax and fell asleep. After a while, she woke up startled and realized she had not seen Snowy for some time. Sophie called out to her mom. Mom? No, darling. Let me go check on the lawn. Sophie too searched around and kept calling. Snowy, where are you? Come here. Few minutes later, she was getting worried and also felt bad for running away from him. She put posters everywhere and waited for a few days. But still, Snowy was found by no one. She was super worried and called Samira. <laughs> Hi, Samara. Um, I wanted to say that I kind of lost Snowy. What? No, that's not possible. How could you be so careless, Sophie? Now I'll never trust you again. She couldn't believe what she had heard. She tried to apologize. So sorry. I'm fine. I'm trying to find him. Please don't be mad at me. And then the phone call was cut. Samara. Sophie tried calling her again and again, but it was declined. Anyways, did little Miss Sophie know that Snowy was in the neighbor's garden all this time, lying under the bushes? The next morning, she woke up and heard her mother calling. Sophie, come quickly! Sophie ran to her mother in the garden. There, she saw Snow, Sophie, uh, the neighbor, and right there, she saw Snowy. He was all dirty and looked tired. He barked happily and wagged his tail when he saw Sophie. Mm -hmm. he ran towards him, picked him up and said, Thank goodness you aren't lost. This lovely doggy came to our backyard three days back and we saw its collar and guessed it was lost. We gave him food and shelter and I, and today morning, I noticed the poster you have put up on the corner of her street. I didn't know you had a dog or I would have written him the first day. No, auntie. It's my friend's dog which she have left with us for a few days. I'm extremely grateful for you to, for taking care of it. And I'm happier than ever that we found him. I'll call Samaya tomorrow and tell her the good news. Oh, then you should have, you have always supported.
push to take care of others' things more than yours. Especially if they have trusted you to handle the responsibility. I'm happy for this little creature. It didn't get harmed. And she left. Sophie washed Snowy Snort so well that he was cleaner than before. Then it was the day she was waiting for. It was Samira's ninth birthday. Sophie called Samira and said, What is it, Sophie? Hi, Samira. Good news, Samira. I found Snowy. Really? Oh, thank God. You're just simply the best. And Sophie, sorry about everything I did to you. Okay, and ho, oh, happy birthday, Samara. Hope you have a good day. The next day, there was a ring at the door again, and it was Samira who came to take Snowy back. Sophie gave Snowy and said, Hope we meet again, Samara, and Snowy as well. Bye. Bye. <laughs> There was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. Ding dong. dong. I wonder who it could be. Mummy opened the door. Hello, can we play with Sophie? Of course. Sophie and I are having tea. Would you like to join us? No, oh, thanks. We just had some. We'll wait. Jack and Judy are twins. They have been Sophie's best friends since first grade. Hey Jack, hey Judy, it's a bit chilly outside, so let's play in the Arctic. I remember we used to play there when we were little kids. Playing the board game over there. Jack, Judy and Sophie rush into the attic. It's really dusty in here. Let's search for some games. Oh, I found a good one. It's called Wonderland. I haven't noticed this game before. It looks quite old. Some games came from my grandparents' house yesterday night. It must be one of them. Judy opens the box. Uh, there's a paper. Here, it must be the instructions. It says, play the game. I can't understand the rest. Oh, well, let the game begin. Yeah, I'll start. Suddenly, a portal appears under them. What's going on? Oh no! Sophie and her friends are being sucked into the portal. Are we in the board game? It says this way to one of them. Let's follow it. Let's inquire on how to get home. Sophie and her friends went inside and met an all sort of animal. What is this? It has paws of a lion, wings of an eagle, and body of a unicorn. All looking for me. I'm the Angocorn, and Julie, you guessed my part right. Um, the Angocorn? Can you help us get home? Uh, let me recall. Sorry, I do not know the way home. Why don't you go and ask Harry Potter? All right, let's go. Sophie and the twins go to meet Harry Potter. Oh, I see Harry Potter. Let's speak to him. The Niagacorn told me you'll be here soon. Harry, can you please tell us the way home? Oh, how I wish it was printed in the Daily Prophet.
of it. I seem to have forgotten. Wait a minute. Why don't you go and ask the Queen of Hearts? Mind you, she's a bit grumpy to be honest. Don't you I said this? Sure, Harry. Thanks for your help. Mm -hmm. Elsa and Sophie, go to meet the Queen of Hearts. Hey, I see a palace over there. I think the Queen of Hearts is there. We have come here to meet the Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts has a visitor. Ba -ba -ba -ba. What do you want? Excuse me, can you guide us home? You think I'm a map? How am I supposed to know? Get out or I'll chop off your heads! Jack, Julie and Sophie are pulled out by the guard. But lucky for them, the guard is frenzy. Uh-oh, why did you get her on temper? There's a woman on the cliff ahead. She'll definitely guide you out. So much, Mr. Guard. We'll go as quickly as we can. I see a cliff ahead. Let's go. Why does that woman look like mommy? Sophie, you found me. You solved the puzzle. Mommy, what are you doing here? I knew how to play this game because I was born in it. To get home. You told you knew the game well. So can you help us get home? Of course. Just hold your hands and say, take me home. Take, take me, me home. home. Back home. Let's not touch the game again. I agree. It's seven o'clock. We better get going. All right. Bye. It was such an amazing adventure. Aren't I right? It was such an amazing adventure. Aren't I right? Well, hello there. My name is James Brown, and today I'm going to tell you a story. Again, not about me. This story is about a little girl named Sophie. Sophie one day was having tea with her mother in the kitchen, and when someone knocked on the door. Oh, darling, can you get that? Your mom. Mom, I think it's for you. Oh, hi there. How may I help you? Our apartment is infested with roaches. Quick thing. Sophie's mom is a neurosurgeon and she'd rather operate with one hand rather than live in a house infested with roaches. to a lovely hotel, the eight octave. Okay, thank you very much. When Sophie and her mom were checking into the eight octave hotel, a weird man in the hallway was looking at Sophie. Is that really you? It can't be you. You've grown so big. What are you doing here? I'm on vacation. Is that a problem? If you want to talk, let's go to the room, not here. Lorena and the man go to the room 304. What do you mean you're on vacation? I'm on vacation with my daughter. Is that a problem? She is not your daughter. Yes, she is. She's here and I want to see her here. Even Sophie's here, and I'm going to see her no matter what. <gasps> Many years ago, when Loreen gave birth to Sophie, her father was arrested for robbery. They later to just decided to divorce each other. And during this horrid conversation, Sophie enters. What's going on? Oh, Sophie, meet your father, Max Brown. Father? I have a father? Yes, you do. Hi there. It's been so long since I've seen you. Where have you been all these years? 
It's a long story, but I have a surprise for you. Lizzie, come here. Yes, Daddy. What is it? Hey, who is who she? Who is she? You vote as twin sisters. No way. This is some sort of practical joke, and Daddy, it's not funny. You can clearly I agree with her. Lizzie sitting over there is Sophie's twin sister. They both always thought of ways to get their parents back together, but they never succeeded. They even never gave up. Days passed and they became best friends. They, they used to walk to school together, be in school together, even eat lunch together. Mmm, your mom cooks the best food. Hey, you look sad. I was talking to mom last night. She told me you guys are going back to Pennsylvania next week. I'm going to miss you so much. Oh no. All hope can't be lost. I have a plan. Come on. They discuss their plan very carefully. They discuss their plan very carefully. And back at Sophie's house, the exterminators are doing their job. Come on. We need evidence. You would like it if you were in my shoe. My shoes? Ugh, you'd never get it. Hey, whose shoes are those? Hey, those are evidence that Max is a robber. Ha, ha, ha. Got him on the back. Sophie and Lizzie notices, and they are in rage, and they set their plan to action. How could they do this? Anyway. We have been discussing our plan over and over for hours, modifying and changing it. Now is the time to put it in action. Sophie, you go and exchange the evidence quickly. I do. Why can't you do it? Well, I have a much harder job than you. And if you want Daddy to be saved quickly, fine. Sophie exchanges the evidence with a lot of difficulty. Oh, ha ha, who's tickling me? Me, it's the girl. After her. <coughs> hey, no. Sophie escaped with the evidence, but Lizzie did not. At the end of the hotel room 304. Oh my goodness. Why did I do this in the first place? Why did I let him leave the house? Hmm. Oh dear. Mom! Huh? Mom! 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 Forget it. It's my fault. Why did I do this in the first place? Okay, tell me the details quickly. Those are the exterminators. The people who are exterminating our house. Oh, it's quite a shock. Because they're upstairs. Come on, put your pistons ready. Let's go. At room 404. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? What I think. Happened? I'm not sure. I think we're in the hotel. Who will yeah. save you now? I don't know. Daddy, they're exterminators. They're evil. They're not real exterminators, Daddy. I think this is the end now. I'm not sure what I should do. Leave my okay, sister and mom. my father alone. Sophie, you came. Thank you for saving our lives. I'm sorry, Lizzie. I left you. It's no problem. Suddenly, a police car just dashes over the hotel. <laughs> this is a musical note. Shut up, will ya? There's a murder. Sophie narrates the whole story to the police officers. What do you say about... Yourself now, Mr. Max Brown. A few years back, I went, I robbed the bank only to get my two daughters the perfect gift. I'm really sorry. 
For this crime, you'll be arrested for three whole months. And this is the shortest time for your crime, mister. Thank you very much, officer. I'm really grateful for that. Fine, buy me a pizza. Sure. Come, Come on, on go buy him. Mr. Max Brown, my humble brother. He deserved what he got and he was, of course, ashamed for his mistake. He enjoyed one jolly Christmas with his family. The police guys enjoyed it too. And this was the end of the story. I wonder what that be. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Marx. Um, I have some unfortunate news. Mommy, what's wrong? What's happening? What's wrong? For you? Your husband, Private John Marx, has been martyred in action. I'm so sorry for your loss. No, we I'm not dead. He's not dead. You're lying. It's true. He's gone. And once again, so sorry for your loss. It's okay, sweetie. Calm down. I'll leave you to yourself now. <laughs> oh, please switch off the light. Please switch off the light. Whoa. What's this? Whoa! Wonderful place, isn't it? I'm Ben, Denial. Nice to meet you, Sophie. <laughs> Don't worry, it's nothing. Okay. Calm down. We're fine here. Wait, are you sure? Yeah, sure. Look, that right there, that's just um, a misunderstanding. So don't you go worrying about that. Hey, maybe you can stay with me. We can go fishing. Sure. Sophie, come here. Um, how do you know my name? Oh, I know a lot of things. i take you around town. It's so beautiful. Yeah, sure. Isn't it so amazing? I call it Hippocampus. Fun name, right? So free, the waves move with nothing holding them back. why we're here. See, Sophie, unlike the man you met earlier, I want to move on from this village. I want to explore the great unknown. I want to sail the seas. I want to be free. But what you're looking at is what I call an iris. Iris? An endless storm. It started appearing way before you arrived. When it arrives, the area will be covered in internal darkness. Oh, that's really bad. How do you stop it? Follow me. He killed my goat. What's wrong with you? What's happened, miss? That guy killed my goat. And he said he thought it was a wild animal. In which world is a goat a wild animal? I swear I'm going to hunt him down. We'll see how he likes it when I say I thought you were a wild animal. Miss, please calm down. Really, calm down. That's your great advice? What if I saw you crying in your bedroom? Your father's gone. How are you furious? Wait, how do you... You're right. I am angry. Oh dear, Sophie, let's get away from here quickly. She seems dangerously angry. Yes. Maybe you need to sit down. We'll continue in a minute or so. Yeah, sure. Oh, hello there. Uh, you seem a little upset. Um, tell you what, I take this, hold it in your hand and pray. Okay, pray. Ask for whatever it is that you want that will make you happy again. But promise that you'll give something in return. 
There you go. Try it out. Please bring daddy back. Just please. I'll do all my chores, listen to my parents and be a good girl. Just please, I'll do anything. I'll also just give up my friends. Please bring daddy back. That's all I want. Sorry, this isn't, this isn't going to help. I understand. Well, if you ever need help again, I'm right here. See you later. I couldn't help but overhear you. I'm a sailor by the way. I'm in charge of the docks. And I have to say you're right. It won't blow the storms away and it won't bring your father back. Wait, how do you know that? How do you know any of that? You see now, don't you? It's over. This rest of your life. This rest of our lives. There's nothing I can do now. Just give and let the storms take you. Maybe, maybe you're right. No, no, Sophie, your life is wonderful. Live it to the fullest. You have your mother, your aunts, your uncles, your friends. There are people who want to take care of you. People who will be devastated if you don't return. Are you about to do that to them? But daddy is dead and he'll never return. I know, but believe in yourself. It's going to be okay. Oh, perfect. Look, we're here. It's the ocean. Sophie, you now have a choice. You've seen the village and you've seen the ocean. If you choose the ocean, no storm can come, stand or come in your way. If you choose the village, the storm will come after you. Well, will you come with me? Of course I will. I will always be with you as long as you're willing to keep moving. So, shall we? I can do this. I know I can. Everything will be alright. Yes. Whoa. Continue. Ferg. Five stages of grief. Denial. Anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Coming! So, I had this crazy dream. What? Once, there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. I wonder who that could be. I get it, mum. Mummy, Daddy's loyal Harvey's here with Daddy's will. Oh, come in, Harvey. Take a seat. What can we do for you? I've got something for the kids. Only the kids. Oh, okay. I'll be waiting outside then. Your father instructed me to read you this after his demise. So, dear children, if you have received this letter from Harvey, it means I'm no more. You are the true inheritors of my wealth. I've set up an adventure for the both of you to find it. It is going to be extremely dangerous, so be careful. Don't trust anyone, not even your mom. This is the first clue. You act like a monkey or place outdoors to have fun. Too bad it's closed now. Walk down University Street and find your first answer. I'll leave you kids to it. So, what happened? Did he give you guys anything? Oh, nothing. Okay. Hello, kiddos. Where do you want to go today? We aren't sure yet. Just start driving north. We'll figure it out. A place outdoors to have fun. Too bad it's closed now. Walk down University Street. University Street. Fifi, do you have any idea what this means? Anyway, there are only two big universities in England. Oxford and Cambridge. A place outdoors to have fun. Mm, a park maybe? 
to ride its girls now. The park close to Cambridge is still open. That means it has to be the abandoned park down Oxford Street. It ain't to Oxford Street it is. You act like a monkey. Monkey, well, they, they swing, they eat bananas. Monkey, look, a swing. Nice one. Monkey, come here. I think I heard someone in those bushes. Who are you? Sophie. Leo, I didn't expect to see you here. I'm Danny. I was your dad's best friend. I was so shocked to hear that he passed away. I'm so sorry for your loss. What's that in your hand? Well, we're not supposed to share this with anyone. But if you're so close to dad and you're an adult, we figured out we could tell you. This is the first clue to our father's wealth. We figured out that this is in this park. But we are confused about what it is. Can I see the clue? Maybe I can help you figure it out. Seems to me like the clue is near the swings. That's what we thought. You guys wait here. I'll try to figure it out. Okay. I think he found it. Surprised to see me here, are you, Sophie and Leo? Stupid kids fell right into my trap. Let's go, Sebastian. Are you kids all right? What are you doing here? I was passing by the park when I saw your driver talking to someone suspicious. So I came looking for you. Now, quick, let's follow your driver. This must be their headquarters. Let's enter. The plan worked flawlessly. I stole the clue from the kids. Uh, who's this guy? Oh, this. This is driver Sebastian. He works at the kids' house. He's in on this though, don't worry. Seb, this is Giselle, John's sister. And this is Zane, John's arch enemy. Enough with the intro already. Where's Nightingale? He'll be here any minute now. Who's Nightingale? How am I supposed to know? Someone's coming! Quick, hide! Greetings! Thanks for joining our little meeting. Is that Mom? Hey, Buck Faces! The Queen's back. Seb, this is our leader, Caroline, John's wife. Caroline, we got the clue from the children. But it's got us all confused. Let me read let me read it. They're reading the second clue now. I'll note it down. Good work, my children. Found your second and the last clue. Here it is. Found her under the side throne, cone, alone, flower, and in her money. Hint, my number is in the clue. Did you get it on? Yep. So was anyone able to make sense of that clue? Oh, it's got me stumped. Let me read it again. Ponder under a side throne. Wait, who's that? Oh no, it's Sophie and Leo. You idiots, how could you not make sure no one ever heard us? We didn't think they could find us here. Oh, I always have to do everything. It's fine. Let's just focus on figuring out what that clue means and getting that money. Do you have any idea what the clue means? Founder Anil recite throne, cone alone, flower, antenna, money. Hint, my number is in this clue. Does this sentence even make sense? Also, what does the hint mean? Wait a minute. Founder Anil recite. I got it. If we remove a few letters from uh, each word, it makes a digit. Like, um, if you remove N, D, and E from founder, you get four. And if you remove um, A from Anil, you get ill. Then, and there are ten words in the clue. That means it has to be a phone number. Let me try calling this number. 
If you're hearing this message, it means you've solved the last puzzle to reach my wealth. Now, for the coveted location to my wealth, it is hidden in the London Library, Shelf 14, Book 5. We did it! Let's go find that wealth! Hold the thought just a minute. I need to use the restroom. You guys, go to the car. Okay. Not so fast. Where do you think you're going? I have a gun in my pocket. If you value your life, get in the car slowly. Don't make this harder than this is, kids. We know you have the solution. Just tell us where to go. London Library. Shelf 14. Book 5. You better not be lying, or else there'll be dire consequences. Okay, let's go, Sebastian. We've reached the library. You guys better stay in the car. Enough to your chat. Let's go. Guys, look, it's a cell 14. Guys, I got it. Book five. Look what's inside. Million <laughs> pounds. I'm gonna be rich. No, we're gonna be rich. Really? Because the last time I checked, the only thing gonna be a prisoners. Hello, Charlie. You are so smart. How did you, how did you manage to get out? Thank God for Uncle Harvey. He came and rescued us. And well, like he said, in a much more amusing way, he was the one who called the cops. Yes. Take them away, officers. As always, good triumphs over evil, and Sophie and Leo inherit the hundred million pounds. Along with the wealth, the kids found a letter explaining to them that John was always suspicious of their mother, but did not have any proof to be certain. Since then, the kids have been living happily with Harvey, who became their legal guardian. There once was a girl named Sophie. She was drinking tea with her mother in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. I wonder what that could be. It seems to be a gift, like the one the neighbor usually gives this time of the year. Well, let's open it then. Ah! Oh! oh my god, I heard the screams. What happened? Did someone die in here or something? Oh. Call the police now. Thank god the body is covered. Hey, I see you got my present. Oh, sorry, not the time. Isn't that the mailman? Sophie, would you go and call your siblings? I think they would want to see your father. He's coming and they should hear the news. Now, I must have forgotten to mention this, but you see, Sophie's mother and father had gotten a divorce a few years ago. After that, Sophie's mother, not having enough money, started her own business of postal career. Due to that, she became quite wealthy. She supplied most mailmen to the neighborhoods. This mailman was one of her very own. The father was also quite successful. He was the chief of police. Now, back to the story. Yes, of course. I will call Archie from university, Peter from summer camp, and Maya from her future. Miss Scarlett, I really don't want to inconvenience you, but as you only know about this crime and crisis, please do keep it to yourself. Oh, don't worry. I understand your situation. Your secret is safe with me. It's the next day, and Sophie's siblings have all managed to come home. They stand together in the living room, talking about last night's incidents. Mom, are you and Sophie okay? What's going on? Yes, Archie. We're fine. When did the police arrive? Shortly after we saw the body, it was really horrible. 
One moment we went outside a few feet to get the present, and when we came back, there was a dead body on the table and red bloody footprints leading out the back door. And the footprints didn't lead anywhere when you checked? Actually, the footprints led in the neighbor's backyard, which I thought was strange. But they just stopped there, so I wouldn't think much of it. I should go and check what the police are saying. So, isn't it suspicious that the footprints led into the neighbor's backyard? Yeah, what was in the present anyway? Well, it wasn't much of a present unless you consider the mailman's hat and a note that says, Merry Christmas. If you don't want to end up like the mailman, then make sure you show up at the road at 11 p.m. tomorrow. Make sure no one's watching you and leave any money you have under the lamppost. It was the kind of, the, it was the kind of gift that the neighbor usually gives, which was why Mum and I were so surprised by the contents of the gift. We should stop the cycle ourselves. Well, since we're doing this mission, I think we should gather some information that the police already have. So, what if we could start by asking Dad? Ah, oh, there he is. Hey, Dad. Kids. Hey, Dad, we were wondering if we could get a bit of information about the case. No, I don't think I can. But maybe you can tell me where I'm Miss Rook lives. Yeah, down the street to the last house, near the lamppost there. Great, thank you. Okay guys, I think we should go. By the way, Dad, did you hear about Miss Scarlett? I think Mum must have told you. Yeah, she just seemed a little off. Did someone call me? I was coming here to check on the investigation and I heard my name. Yes, hello. Do you mind going through a bit of questioning being a witness to crime? Oh no, of course, that's fine. But could we do this a little quickly? It's getting kind of late. She could be a suspect. A little while later. Even if the neighbor is suspicious, guys, we have absolutely no proof. She wasn't even in the house when we saw the body. She came afterwards. I, I really don't think it was her. Guys, I have an idea. You know how I take uh, computer science in university, am I right? So I've learned hacking in university and uh, I'm sure you guys know that the security videos are stored in the laptop near the gate security office. So what if I told you that I could hack into the system and we could see who did it? Let's do it because soon the module will find out that the security cameras got everything and he or she will delete them and we won't have anything again. Okay, just a second. It's done. Let's see. Oh my god, is that? Miss Brook, will you be willing to come to the police station to draw what you saw? Yes, I think so. But I did not see much. As I told you, I saw someone about as tall as well you. Dad, come inside the house this moment. Hey, wait, what's the problem again? You did it! You're the criminal of the case you are solving! Unbelievable! Guys, what's going on? Dad is the murderer and he has been lying to us. So why don't you tell us how you pulled it off, liar? Wait, is this true? No, why would it be me? It was me. I killed the mailman as a message because your mother was with a lot of money and I think I deserved most of it. And you see, your mother's very dark because she left me a key. I then made the neighbor the prime suspect by placing the contents of her gift and hiding the bloody shoe in her backyard. I also hit the security tapes and just like that, I'm innocent. But sadly, it's just your word against mine. I'm the chief police officer of this case and people are going to believe me over you. I'm also deleting the proof. Just like that, I'm going to steal your mother's business and frame the neighbor. What? Why me? I'm innocent. You're just a filthy man who'll do anything to get your way. He made me look guilty at every turn. How dare you? Oh, he deleted every trace of it. He's right. We don't have any proof. Get out before I call the police. Police? So well, here I am. But it's too bad I have this whole conversation recorded. You're going to jail, Dad.
Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mommy in the kitchen. Suddenly there was a ring at the door. I wonder who that could be. I'll get the door, mother. Oh, it's Officer Jenny. I hate to inform you, but Mark is no more. He passed away in a car accident. What? How was this possible, Auntie? We only talked for half an hour and then we left. Sometime later, I came to take my wallet, so I left it there. And then I saw Mark dead. I can't believe this. I need this to be investigated. The next day, Emma and Sophie went to a detective they knew, as Emma wanted this case to be investigated. Detective, my dad died in a car accident. This is impossible. Dad was never a reckless driver. I never thought the time we spent in the park would be my last time seeing him. It's true. This is odd. I was told that it was a murder as they found a stab wound in his chest. Also, the autopsy report is confirmed. What? Now how do we know which one is true? There's only one way that we can figure out how he died. That is, if we go to Scotland Yard and interrogate all the witnesses. Emma, Sophie and the detective went to Scotland Yard where they were welcomed by officers handing them files with information about the case. Here you go, ma'am. The complete case file. Please go to the interrogation room. We have the suspects there. Ma'am, we even have Officer Denny under interrogation. Nobody has said anything useful until now. Emma and Sophie, go home. I'll call you guys if we get any leads in the case. Yes, Mia. Mia, thank you so much for helping us. No problem. I'm just doing my duty. Emma and Sophie went home, hoping for a lead in the case. Mia went back to work at the Smith house. Mom, is Dad actually dead? Yes, Sophie. I don't believe this. I never thought the time he spent in the park would be my last time seeing him. Yay, this is so much fun. Can you the rock with the scissors? Okay, fine. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Mom, did you see that? I defeated Dad. Wow, Mark, you lost your own daughter. Sophie, Emma, just wait and watch how I will defeat you both. Mark receives a message from his old friend. Oh, I've got to go. Jenny called me and she wants to meet up. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you Bye. soon. Bye. See you soon. Back at Scotland Yard. Now that I've solved the case, I should call Emma and Sophie. Mia, did you solve the case? Yes, I did. So what happened to father? Come on, I'll tell you. We have the three witnesses and Officer Jenny under interrogation. Good. Please continue with the interrogation. When and where did you see Mark, Jenny? I saw Mark at about four in the evening. Okay. Now, you three, where were you when the murder took place? I was walking in the park. Suddenly, I heard a crash. I was at the ridge when I saw smoke rising up, so I rushed there immediately. I was at the car repair shop when I heard a loud noise and an alarm go off. Divya, please check the CCTV footage for proof, please. Yes, just a minute, ma'am. The footage doesn't show any of you in the places you just said you were in. Forget it. I'll talk to you later. Jenny, you saw the body. What happened? Like I said before, I left my wallet, so I came to pick it up. And then I saw Mark dead. Jenny, just tell me the truth. I am telling the truth. We don't have all day. Please make it quick. Fine. I killed Mark because he was a terrible person. Nobody knew the truth about him. In one of his missions, he killed my husband's son. I wanted to avenge them, but I didn't want to hurt Sophie or Emma. I didn't know what else to do. I couldn't do anything. You will be going to jail, ma'am. You have lifetime imprisonment. You won't be coming out soon, even if you get bail. To 
this is how the case went on. I'm sorry, Emma and Sophie. No, no, don't be sorry. You helped me find out how my husband died. I should be thanking you. Yes, thank you, Mia. You're welcome. There was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mommy while watching TV. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. I wonder who that is. I go get it. Sophie? Sophie? The mom finds a phone. It might belong to the kidnapper. The next day. The team just called in. They told that the phone belongs to someone called a Mr. James who lives 15 minutes from here. Okay, let's go. Hello, are you Mr. James? Yes, I am Mr. James, but uh, my full name is Mr. James Gwynn, so I prefer you call me Mr. Gwynn. Uh. Okay, uh, Mr. Gwen, does this phone belong to you? Well, it used to, but not anymore. I gave it to my cousin a week ago. Okay, okay. Uh, could you tell where she could be staying? Yes, she lives in... Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, hello. Hello, ma'am. Are you Brown, Miss Brown? Well, yeah. And how can I help you? Well, uh, does this phone belong to you? Well, yeah, it's mine. And I was just about to call the police to help me find it. L liar! You kidnapped Sophie and you cannot define. Therefore, I will cuff you. No, uh, I would never kidnap anyone. And who? Uh, Sophie. The detective spent over three hours interrogating Miss Brown, but it was to no avail. She had no idea who Sophie was, and then they were unable to make any connection to her. It has been a long day, hasn't it, Mr. Sam? Yep. Let me see. It's 12 o'clock already. I need the help in another case. Wait. Where did you get such an expensive watch from? Huh. I wonder if Sam was able to get such an expensive watch. I know he hasn't been doing very well. And I also heard that he got this job with a lot of difficulty too. Oh, well. Well, Detective Olivia is uh, pondering on things. Let us see what Detective Sam is up to. Aunt Rose, I think Detective Olivia suspects me because of the expensive watch. Uh, you don't say... Be careful. We do not want to get caught. Anyways, what do you do? I am writing a perfect ransom note to my sister so she can give me money in return for her daughter Sophie. Mm, sounds like you. This place is a mess. I'm going to clean up a bit. Let's throw all the waste paper outside. Okay, you do that. Next day began with much excitement for Detective Olivia. Look what is found today. It's a piece of paper, but a great one for Mrs. Stacy. Aren't you happy, Mr. Sam? We have made a breakthrough. Yeah, I'm happy. As Detective Olivia felt something was fishy, she decided to head on to the only watch seller in the locality to see if Detective Sam had bought his watch or if he got it as a gift from someone. Hello, ma'am. Is there anything I can do for you? You see, I found this watch lying all outside. May I know who it belongs to so I can return? Mm, 
Uh, yes, I think it belonged to a human. I don't have time for this rubbish. Describe him or her. I think he had two arms and two legs. Shush, open your box. Ma'am, why don't you just give it to me? I can return it for you. Um, because I don't want to make you lose your business, you know. Okay, ma'am. Fine, I'll tell you. Okay. The watch was bought by a certain Mr. Sam. It was a very costly watch. Then why didn't you tell me this before? He paid me a thousand rupees to keep me quiet. Who do you think did it? Suspect one or suspect two? I think the owner of the tablet did it. How long will you keep pretending? What do you mean? I know you did it. Where's Sophie? Me and Aunt Rose have nothing to do. Oh, what? Forget about what I said. Not a chance. Who is she? Aunt Rose said she would give me 40% of the profit if I kidnapped Sophie. You know you both are going to be sent to court and get the punishment you both deserve. Oh, okay, ma'am. If you want the girl, she's down in the basement of this house. Okay. Thank you so much for finding her. Sophie, there you are. Thank God you're okay. Finally, someone's here to help me out of this dark and scary place. It's all right. Uh, thank you so much, Miss Olivia, for finding her. Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. I wonder who that could be. He got a letter. Here you go. Okay, thank you. Ooh, what is that? Just a letter someone sent. Hmm. Why are there numbers? Maybe they're just coordinates that lead to somewhere. Quarter what? Okay then, these are coordinates that lead to a graveyard. How morbid. Um, I'm a bit scared. Don't be, Sophie. Let's just continue playing. Okay. I wonder who that could be again. It's my boss. I mean, somebody sent you another package. Here you go. Another package? That's strange. Ooh, open it, open it. Hmm, let's see. Oh, it's a doll. Oh, it's a bit wet, but it's very pretty. Can I keep it, please? I'm sorry, sweetie, but we don't know where that came from. I'll play with it every day. Okay. Yay, what should I name it? Oh, it has a tag on it. It says its name is Chloe. Oh, me and Chloe will have so much fun. Hi, honey. Why are you home so early? My boss fired me. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? He said the sales were plummeting and he just fired me. Chloe, would you like more tea? Um, who are you talking to? Oh, this is doll we got in a package. But, but the doll, I thought I got rid of it. Why would you want to get a doll? Well, it, it haunted me since I was little, until I threw it in a river, but how is it back? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But it's true. Maybe you're just in shock after you got fired. Go to bed, sweetheart. I'll call you once dinner is ready. Well, that must be it. The next day, the family go to the circus. Long time no see. It has been quite a while, yes. Well, I wanted to talk to you. Remember the doll? Oh, yeah. And Sophie, can you please uh, go with your mother? Yeah, remember the doll from a couple of years ago? Well, it's back. Sam, Sam, Sam. You haven't changed. That doll is gone. Me and you made sure of it. If it was still there, it would be haunting you. Well... Wait. 
that doesn't make any sense but well, nonetheless it's not here anymore yeah you're right oh my i have to rush i'm so sorry i have to go to my doctor well uh, goodbye i'm so already okay hello would you like your fortune told yeah sure hmm the boss says that you must be wary of trusting your closest friend ha huh, that's real thank you you're welcome Remember, your dolls, they've been haunting me since I was a little. Sorry, I can't help you. I'm kind of busy right now. Huh, not even David Allen believes me. David Allen? Is your friend David Allen? Oh, uh, yes. He always makes my doll evil by trapping someone. David is scared of snakes, so I keep a pet snake around me so he cannot do anything more to my dolls. Doesn't make sense. My friend David would never do that. But it's true. He has done it before. I've seen it with my CCTV cameras. At home. Mom, I think my doll is moving. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing. Uh, I'm not kidding. It, it drinks tea on its own, and I'm not even moving it. I'm sure it's nothing, Sophie. But for your comfort, there's only cotton inside it. See? My <laughs> God. I am so sorry. All these years I've been stuck in here and I've been trying to give you a sign. I knew it. You are real. The ghost has been haunting me. Uh, very sorry, but that parcel I gave you earlier was not meant for you. Could I have that back? I vividly remember one of you were the people who trapped me inside. I don't know what you're talking about, Chloe. Where's David Allen? I know. It's gone to the movies. Hello, police. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. What's there's, the problem? There's a dangerous man down the block. I think his name is David Allen. Can you help us? Oh my, sir. He's one of like the most wanted criminals. Where's yeah. your address? Can you come? Okay. What's your address? He's down the block. I think it's in the Cineplex Theater. Okay, the Cineplex. ETA is three minutes. I'll be there. Okay. 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 okay come fast. Here He's he is. Get it. him. Hands up! You're coming with me, Mister. After all these years, now I'm finally free. It's time to get revenge. Once upon a time, there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with their mommy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. I wonder who could that be? Hello, my name is Athena. I'm a time traveler from the future. I'm here looking for Sophie. Go away, kid! It's not Halloween yet. No, please. I really need to see Sophie. Well, if you insist. Oh, strangely, you look quite familiar. Well, Sophie, you see, I'm your great great granddaughter. We are nice try. No, really, I am your great great granddaughter. Mom, why did you come here? Well, I got trapped here, and the guy in the photo stole my future portal, and now I can't back home. Is there a way to get the portal back from the guardian? Yes, we prefer to fight the toughest guys in the future. Okay, so now we need some equipment from the military. Great. Sophie and Athena head to the military base. So you. Salutations, Sophie. Who is the stranger, and what brings you here? This is my great 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 granddaughter, and um, no, copy cop, no such thing. No, really, look. See. Never in my whole life would I have expected this day to come. Um, can we borrow a combat knife and some grenades? That's not enough. You can have some hydration guns and a few weapons too. Take your lucky ketchup with you as well. Thanks, Al. No problem, Sophie. Okay. 
First, we must travel to New Delhi, the capital of India, and beat the glitch god. His glitches will kill you at the end of the day. Sophie and Athena teleport to New Delhi, the easiest and most comfortable way to travel. It's free. Uh, how dare you? Bah, I'm kidding. I thought so, glitch god. Whatever, peasant, I'll corrupt you and you'll never be able to return to your future life. Hmm, what does this match do? Sophie, what have you done? Uh, I have to just switch back on. <laughs> oh, what have you done? Oh, you switched the T switch. Stop joking around me, Mr. Glitchpot. Oh, no, no, no. My computer will get infected by a virus. Um, no problem. All I have to do is install NordVPN. No advertisements intended. No, 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 no. Also, I'll be gone. Uh, aren't we supposed to defeat you? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Antivirus installed. That's nice, but oh, no, no, no. You'll pay for this. Next, we must take the time frame from Moon. She controls Moonbeams and is really powerful. After the pair teleports to my favorite travel destination, Tokyo. So you have found me. Fools, you don't know what I control. Sorry, kid. You will have to try harder. Kid, what are you talking about? I'm 42. Thanks, pretty old bro. Silence. I will erase you. How do we beat her now, genius? Her solar eclipse. It's my time. Where are we going to get the sun from? We make the sun. We have the light for that. Be serious for once, please. Okay, I'll try. Have a compact mirror. And I have sun rays. Shine it on her face. Okay, not here. My eyes! Okay, now we must travel to a base in Antarctica. There's a last two who goes by the name Nameless, lives, and he controls fire. They teleport to Antarctica. Ooh, I should have brought my parka. Ah! Ah! Sophie, are you okay? I was my man, but I'm fine. I'm nameless. Apparently, I don't have a name. It is quite sad because I wanted zero, but zero took it. So they named me nameless. How ironic. Uh, are we supposed to fight you to get the time frame or discuss your life problems? Fight me. Otherwise, what was the point of getting attacked? I got this. It's nameless. Would you like a name? Actually... Yes, I'm so sorry I got mad at you. In fact, I'll help you on this adventure. Um, how about Blaze to expect to explain your ability to create fire from thin air? Okay, I go by Blaze now. No more TV. Yay! Can you get the last time frame? Of course. Wait, I have to go. I'll see you later. After heading to the warm and cozy yet serious base so you want your portal back adina give it back this is not a joke come and take it stray mud adina thank you so, oh, and make sure i eat my fruit loops how much do you alive i don't even know it's impossible i smell ketchup Oh, my lucky ketchup. I knew that would come in handy. Yeah, again. Oh, come on. You know what? I'm going to. Stop right there, Guardian. Or should I say, Eugene. Nameless. At least I have a name. You don't. I didn't. Until a sweet little bird told me it. And now I go by Blaze. <laughs> I don't like moons at all. I wanted to be gorgeous and beautiful like the sun, but you gave me a dull, pale planet that I hate. 
I have clearly have the best Wi-Fi, and I wanted a name of a good connected Wi-Fi. I have an I have ninety-seven dollars an hour for my Wi-Fi. Jeff Bezos comes here, but you gave me a name of a bad connected Wi-Fi. Ah, I will disable you, disable all of you, right? Right. No. Sophie, you weren't the brightest, but boy, did I have fun. Well, you were a little rude, but turns out you're not all bad. Sophie and Athena depart into their own portals to one day cross paths again. Hey, mom, I had a blast with my great, 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 great granddaughter. Really? Tell me all about it. <laughs> Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring on the door. I wonder who that could be. Who rang the bell? I don't see anyone here. Wait, what's this parcel doing down here? Why does it say confidential? Feeling scared, she picks up the parcel and takes it to her room. She goes back down. Who was at the door? Oh, uh, no one was there. It was probably one of those kids going around ringing everyone's doorbells. Yeah, probably. Later that evening, after dinner, Sophie goes to her room and opens up the parcel. Oh my God! This is the Music box when I was very little. I can't believe it. I thought I had lost it. Wait, what's this behind the box? Hello, Sophie. I am someone you know, and I have something that will change your entire life. But you have to meet me tomorrow at three o'clock in the address in this note. Who would send this? And why to me? I don't understand, but I have to find out who this person is. Let me call Hazel and Jake to ask them if they were the ones who sent it to me. Hey, Sophie, what's up? Hey, hey guys. Uh, I called to ask you that if by any chance you left a parcel for me at my doorstep today. Mm, no, I've been catching up on schoolwork all day. Why? Did something happen? I spent my entire day binge watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. Great show, by the way. Wow, what is it? The tenth time you're watching that show? Ha ha ha! You are so funny. Yeah, I found a unicorn today. Wait, Wait what? what? Finally, I have your attention. Anyways, I found my old music box today from when I was younger, but I don't know who sent it to me. And there was a note with it too. It asked me to go to some place tomorrow at three o'clock. Wow, this is Nancy to level mystery. Actually, though, I have an idea. Hazel and I can come with you tomorrow. We can be the three musketeers. That would be cool. I'm in. Great then. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Two thousand years later. The next day, Sophie, Hazel, and Jake go to the location mentioned in the note behind Sophie's old music box. They wait there for quite a while, but no one shows up. When they're about to leave, a paper plane glides past Sophie. Looks like there's a note in here. Let me read it and see what it says. Thank you, Sophie, for coming here. I'm sorry, but I can't reveal myself to you yet. But I will soon. Meet me at the address in this note again. Wow! Someone clearly likes to dramatize everything. Exactly. That note was so dramatic. But this place seems all too familiar. Wait. Yeah, I remember. 
my dad used to take me here all the time when i was little but but why on earth would someone want to send me here anyways let's just visit this place now 2000 years later sophie hazel and jake then go to the place mentioned on the paper plane where she finds yet another parcel addressed to her seriously another note who is this person hello sophie this is the last note that you will receive this note will lead you to the secret but you need to be aware at all times follow the map on this note to reach the place think we should go to maybe this little compass will lead us there 2000 years later the trio then goes to the next location mentioned in the note it was not very far from the last location mom dad what are you guys doing here just follow us but keep your eyes closed we have a surprise for you sophie her dad her mom jake and hazel all walk into a beautifully decorated room with pink and white flowers and fairy lights dangling from the wooden poles open your eyes sophie wow what is all of this it's beautiful well since you are leaving for college in a few weeks this is a little going away present we wanted to give you you like it wait 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 hazel jake you knew about all of this obviously we did we were the ones who left the notes and parcels everywhere wow you guys this is amazing i got to see you all pull this off wonderfully i honestly would not have guessed now let us enjoy Sophie, her mom, her dad, Jake, and Hazel enjoyed the entire evening. They watched old videos of Sophie when she was a baby. They watched a movie, dancing, and just enjoyed the moment. Thank you guys so much. This is the best going away present I could have ever gotten. The end. Um. Once there was a little girl called Sophie. She was having tea with her mommy in the kitchen. I wonder who that could be. Sophie, why don't you go down and get the door for me? Okay, mom. Sophie's mom falls asleep because Sophie took quite some time to return and she's exhausted. Someone help me. Sophie's mom runs downstairs to find no one at the doorstep and she starts panicking. Sophie Sophie, where are you? It's been quite some time since you went to get the door. Where are you? Sophie's mom checks the house and then checks outside her house, only to find one of Sophie's hair clips. She looked around the whole neighborhood, but still there was no trace of her daughter. After a good hour searching and constant panicking, she decides to call up the police. you hello sir i need your help in solving a case <clears throat> sorry about that what did you want anyway ma'am my daughter she is missing please help find her calm down lady this stuff always happens <sighs> my daughter is missing and you're having tea i filed a complaint against you for your incompetence my poor Daughter, you're being emotional. This is understandable but unnecessary. My daughter is gone. What do you want me to do? Well, I can't help you right now because I'm drinking tea. Please do something.
something about this. Mm. Nah, maybe later. Dude! Sophie's mom calls another policeman who is known for having a good reputation. Hello, ma'am. How can I help you? My daughter is missing, and I have no idea where she is and what she's doing. I need to find her. I'm sorry, but I'm in the middle of another case regarding a murder, and I don't think I can help you right now, but I can give you a number of a well-known detective who's done a good job by solving many cases in the past. Here's his number. Hmm. Thanks, anyway. Bye. Yeah, happy to help you. Should I call this detective? I think it's worth a shot. Hello, detective. I need your help in finding a missing daughter. Are you up for it? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was just looking for a case to solve. And would you look at the timing? Just know that I will have to do this my own way. And I promise you, we will get to the bottom of this. Toodles. The detective has been solving cases for quite some time now. And now that he was getting only older and much less valued, he decides to up his game. The detective finally had an opportunity to get the limelight. So why not create a case? Why not kidnap Sophie and create a source of income and fame for himself? It seemed perfect to him. On her way, she looked at a figure from afar. Her face was only getting paler by the second as she saw the figure take off his disguise and saw a familiar figure. She had seen the former and the latter form of the person, but she couldn't put a finger away. As she moved closer, she saw the detective coming towards her. Ah, detective, I was just on my way to meet you. By the way, what brings you here? Any updates on my daughter? Yes, madam, I have a lead on the kidnapper. He must have forgotten that there are professionals like me who find people like him for a living. I think I should go now. I have a lead on him. I'll update you later. This seemed quite suspicious. Sophie's mom didn't mention anything about kidnapping. She just said missing. But wait, how did the detective know that it was a he who had kidnapped her daughter? All right, come back in three days and that should be enough time to find out why Sophie went missing. Okay, I'll see you when you have enough evidence to why Sophie went missing. While having her tea, Sophie's mom is interrupted by a phone call. It's Gregory the policeman. I wonder what he wants now. Hello ma'am, I'm actually done with my previous case and I'd like to help you out. I remember your complaint about the missing daughter, right? Yes, and it's been quite a while since the poor child went missing. And one more thing, I think the detective, whose mobile number you gave me, is behind the crime. What? Are you sure? Of course. Do you have any evidence or proof to your claim? I don't know. I just feel suspicious by his behavior. And that day, when Sophie went missing, I saw someone, familiar, taking off things, like a disguise. And suddenly, detective came and treated me and was off, just like that. Do you um, maybe think it might be him? You see, I've trusted this detective for years altogether. Surely it can't be. But all right, let's find out. So, where do we start? At his house. Um, we'll go tomorrow before dawn strikes. Then... Um, I will give you a phone call at first light to come and join me. We'll follow him wherever he goes and see if we can find anything suspicious about the guy. Once he leaves his house, we will carry a thorough search and see what we can find. Sophie's probably being held captive at the detective's house. That's if you're saying is true. He won't kill her because the thing he wants is mo our money and fame. He'll give Sophie back to you soon. But 
we should find a way to apprehend the idiot and he'll get all the fame he wants when his story is published uh in published worldwide oh what a plan i really hope this works i can guarantee it will all right bye dawn struck the next day and mr gregory was making his way to the detective's house hmm i wonder whether the detective is at home i'll find a hiding place where i can keep a close watch on the goings over here after about 10 minutes of waiting police gregory saw a figure come out of the house he couldn't recognize the person because he was so far away but he knew it was the detective he kept a distance but followed him and then the police saw the detective put on a disguise stupid lady she doesn't know that sophie will die because of me ha 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 police gregory then unknown to the detective follows him sees him bind sophie to a chair and raises his gun and then suddenly mom you've been sleeping for quite some time are you okay oh that's the door i'll go get it sophie's mom was still disoriented from the dream and it took her quite a few moments to realize what sophie was saying no sophie don't go but it was too late guess who's back and as we come to the end of a wonderful performance today i want to thank you all the students specially for putting up such a wonderful performance every one of you the little ones students of the intermediate level for the device dramas that you created and put up good job it was wonderfully done thank you so much for all the effort thank you for the passion that you bring to it uh, to the students of all the four houses very well done indeed you surprised us all uh, you have proved that you are unstoppable and that the love for performance has taken root in your hearts and i know that this will only go places i'm so excited by the work you have done so a big thank you for to each and every student for the absolutely wonderful performance that you have put together collectively i cannot end this evening without thanking parents and siblings all members of the families who have come together to make this happen because i know what it has taken for uh, you to put this i know that families have all stepped up to help you create these performances not just that but to shoot it to create the backdrops to give to help you with props makeup costume and then to promote your videos on the social media thank you so much parents you are phenomenal just like your children you are stars as well thank you so very much again a very big thank you to our chief guest mr abhishek majumdar it means so much to me that you were here with us today we are going to take a short break now but we will reconvene meet us on instagram live at 3 pm when we will give away the awards so we're going to have the prize distribution ceremony in a little while on instagram live take a break have your lunch stretch your limbs come back and get ready to cheer i will see you on instagram live at the prize distribution see you then